It's happened then. Chris Hewton has been sacked as Nottingham Forest manager. And this makes my next video coming up quite awkward to watch because it's my reaction to Middlesbrough and I have a bit of a rant at the entire board to sack Hewton and that's now happened. That'll be out later on in the day. But we need to talk about this first and foremost. Of course, I had to do a video on it. It is a shame that it didn't work out for him. He came in just under a year ago, of course, to play Savile Lamucci after another very, very similar start to a season, but it has been even worse. Not that you think it could get any worse, but it, it has. The last few days and weeks, in fact, I've never felt more disconnected, more angry, more disappointed at my club. And it's really been getting me and lots and lots of people down. And Chris Hewton, it is not his fault because this, it, there's a hell of a lot of issues at this club at the top. And the board members need to go more than anyone, in my opinion. But that's a completely different topic. Chris Hewton is the one that's gone and he also needed to go. He was the first name that needed to be out the door. Who's going to replace him? We'll have to wait and see. But let's reflect on his time. Of course, it started pretty well with a very scrappy, lucky win against Blackburn. Then we had a bit of a mini resurgence where we drew like three in a row. It really wasn't the most glamorous start at all. And that basically painted the picture for how it was going to go. Not even like when he came in, he won like four in a row. Nothing like that at all. Then we had a terrible run, of course, after that against a load of top teams and we were just an absolute joke. We picked up in December, of course, and in January. And to be quite honest, apart from the last few games of the season where it was quite negative and dull, the second half of the season, there were a few positives to take, but it was just incredibly dull, uninspiring and negative. But everyone was saying we should give them the transfer window. We did. We signed 10 players after quite a long wait for players to come in and it still hasn't worked and it's gone to a whole new level where we are bottom of the league with one point from 21 being the possible amount of points we could have got after seven games. It's absolutely embarrassing. It may only be seven games in but this is the lowest I've ever known the club get. Literally, when have we ever got this low before? In my lifetime anyway, I mean, I, I can only really remember back to like 2011 um, with me being 20 I, when I was like 10 and that, I can't really remember it that well. But um, yeah, I've never known if he got me the league with one point at any stage of any season. If he had stayed, how long would it have been before we won? It could have been a long time. It really could have been because we were persisting with exactly the same tactics every single game pretty much, particularly recently I've noticed. Our tactic was to hoof balls up to the strikers and just hope that they can do something with it. When pretty much every single time, Gavin or Taylor or both of them cannot win it. And even if it isn't to a striker, just hit the ball at the pitch. Set pieces. All of them are over sharp. Garner, kind of, I mean, you can't really have a go at him too much, but every single free kick or corner that he took was over sharp. But yeah, that is my instant reaction to Chris Hutton being sacked. Who will come in? Who knows? I, I generally don't know. There's been rumours about Chris Wilder, John Terry. I, I heard that Alex Neal was at the game yesterday, which I would not be inspired about. Steve Cooper's been linked. I've heard reports from George Harvey on Twitter and various other sources that we might go overseas, which is what Dane Murphy did when he was at Barnsley, obviously bringing in uh, Vladimir Ishmael to replace Gael Struber at Barnsley at the start of last season. And that worked pretty well, didn't it? You know, Barnsley got fifth. Now, I'm not at all saying that Forrest are going to do that. The chances of us even getting top 10, I think, is incredibly unlikely right now. And let's face the facts. I know I'm waffling a bit, but let's face the facts. Even with a new manager, there's no hard, fast rule that we're going to just, you know, leap up the table. We expected this to happen when Newton came in, and it did not happen at all. We didn't get higher than 14th. And I think he came in when we were like 22nd, something like that. So, I don't know. I'm not going to get my hopes up. I'm not going to be too expectant of this new manager whoever it's going to be because i don't want to fall for it again you know i've not once said this is our year even as a joke because let's face it it's not going to happen there's so much wrong just a general lack of effort by this board and i don't know why it's taken us so long to see that it is the board's fault you know we can appoint a new manager and we'll still be in the same situation. What is the chances of us appointing a new manager in a year's time? He's out the door, even less than that. I think there's a very, very good chance because it's just a circle. It's a circus. It's going round in circles and it ain't going to change until the men at the top are out. Okay? It just ain't going to change and it has to change soon. But I don't see them leaving anytime soon. But anyway, I'm going to stop waffling now. If you have enjoyed this video, which I doubt you have, 
drop a like on it, subscribe to the channel if you're new. That was my instant reaction to Chris Eaton being sacked. And of course, when we do appoint a new manager, I probably well, I will do a video on it. Um, obviously, most of my content right now is about Forest, but there's a hell of a lot going on, so uh, that's why. But yeah, I wasn't at the Boer game, by the way, so it'd be a home reaction. Um, I will be at most home games, of course. This is just a one-off. But yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you very soon.